Hi, tonight we're going to talk about chapter 3, which is we're going to look at the anatomy and the physiology of speech mechanisms. So in order for us to speak, we are using over a hundred muscles um, in our chest, our abdomen, our neck, and our head. And if we're thinking about a hundred different muscles, that is a lot of different things interacting together in order for me to be able to talk like I am. So we're going to talk through those different systems. There are three major functional systems for speech production, and that is respiration, laryngeal, and the supralaryngeal, which includes the pharyngeal, oral, and nasal cavities. Okay, so let's go through each of those tonight. Um, you'll notice that this PowerPoint is a little bit longer than previous PowerPoints we've had. So I probably will break this up into two videos. Please make sure that you watch both video one and two, and I'll make sure to name those accordingly. So this is video one. Let's get started. If we're talking about the function of speech mechanisms, it really has two functions. One is more of the biological function, so breathing and eating, but then we have the speech function, which we're going to be focusing on, and that's going to be you know, it's produced of different configurations which make up different sounds. So speech is going to be the end product of four different processes happening simultaneously and cooperating really well with each other in order for us to have that end product of speech. And those four processes are respiration, phonation, uh, resonance, and articulation. Okay? Um, now on slide three and four, you'll see some helpful links. Uh, this will give you some more information about the anatomy of lungs, the mechanics of ventilation. Uh, on slide four, it'll talk about different muscles, the larynx. It'll show you both normal and disordered vocal folds. So I highly recommend checking out those links. Uh, I'm not going to go into them because you have the links. I want you to look at those. So we're going to move on to slide five. So the first of the systems, the major functional systems I want to talk about tonight, is respiratory system. That's going to consist of lungs, your rib cage, abdomen, and associated muscles. It acts like a pump to provide the, uh, the movement of air needed for speech production. And with the respiratory system, we have two different types of sounds that we can get. We have egressive and ingressive. So egressive is how most of the sounds, in the, all of the sounds, in fact, in the English language are made. So when I breathe out, um, when air is going out of my lungs in order to make a sound, like I'm doing right now, all of the sounds I'm making are on the exhale. Those are egressive with the E, okay? And then ingressive sounds are those made when we're inhaling air into our lungs. So it would sound something like this, you know, when we're inhaling, but we would also make a sound. Um, those don't occur in the English language, but it is good to know because in the International Phonetic Alphabet, if we're talking about different cultural sounds um, for different languages, they will have those ingressive sounds as well. Okay, so let's talk about the second system. The second major functional system is going to be the laryngeal system. And that consists of your larynx, sometimes known as your voice box, um, and your vocal folds um, are housed within that larynx. So what's happening is air is traveling up through the laryngeal system where the voice is then going to be produced. During breathing, your vocal folds are kept apart so that air can move freely in and out of your lungs. However, during speech, the vocal folds are brought together so that the escaping air coming from the lungs uh, will set the, the vocal folds will be set into vibration. Um, so the difference between breathing and speech, there is a lot, and it has to do with those vocal folds, whether they're set into vibration or not. Okay, 
I am on slide seven now. So let's talk a little bit more about the larynx and specifically the glottis. So the glottis is going to be, if these are my vocal folds, let me make sure I'm right here, the space right here, see how there's a little space right there, that's going to be the space between your vocal folds is the glottis. So we don't have a lot of sounds that are produced there, but we do have some. One is the H, the like house, and the other is called a glottal stop. Um, you may have heard, if you've ever worked with children with cleft palate, this is the population that uses glottal stops quite a bit. And it's where we're stopping the air right at that space between the vocal folds. So if I said the word uh-oh, between the uh and the o, oh, I'm stopping, um, the air right at the level of the vocal folds and that is called a glottal stop. So there are times in the English language where glottal stops are appropriate. Um, if we use button instead of button, uh, most of us might use that glottal stop instead of using um, the actual like TT sound. Um, let's see what else. Uh-oh is probably the most common one. So it does happen in the English language. However, uh, children with cleft palate specifically will use it to replace our velar sounds like our K's and our G's. So that's something to watch out for. Okay, we also have the cartilages of the thyroid, the cricoid, and the arytenoid. And then the epiglottis. This is a funny little leaf-shaped cartilage and it's below the root of the tongue, and basically it's covering the entrance of the larynx. So its main purpose is gonna be to prevent food and liquid from going into the trachea. So we don't wanna go all this food and liquid going into our lungs, right? If you're ever choking, um, it may be because some of that food and liquid went into your trachea when it wasn't supposed to. So that, uh, epiglottis, that leaf-shaped cartilage, helps so it closes over our larynx to keep liquid from going in the trachea, and then when we are speaking, it opens back up, okay? So it just kind of hinges right here and covers and uncovers that entrance of the, of the larynx. Okay, slide eight. Let's talk about the third system. So the third major functional system is going to be the supralaryngeal system. It's located supra, meaning above, so above the larynx. It's located above the larynx. It includes the pharyngeal, oral, and nasal cavities. And basically, the pharyngeal cavity, or the pharynx, it's also called, is a muscular tube, and it's divided into two other ca uh, cavities and that would be the nasal cavity and the oral cavity. Um, sounds will travel from the larynx through the pharynx and then either enter the oral cavity or the nasal cavity or sometimes both. Um, and the velum, which is your soft palate, we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later in these slides, that is going to de help determine which cavity um, the sound is traveling through. The supralaryngeal system's main job is to modify the vibrations coming from the vocal folds. And then lastly on this slide, uh, slide eight, I want you to just remember the vocal tract is going to be a combination of the pharyngeal, oral, and nasal cavities, okay? So let's talk a little bit more about that vocal tract. So we have the pharyngeal cavity, which we talked about. That's the vertical tube that's positioned at the posterior vocal, at the posterior vocal tract or the throat. Um, you have the oral cavity. So remember, it's the pharyngeal, and then it breaks into the oral and the nasal. So the oral cavity is going to be your mouth. It's a horizontal tube that runs anterior, meaning up front, to posterior behind. You have your nasal cavity, 
which are the horizontal cavities located above the oral cavity, and resonators help with, uh, with our nasal sounds, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Let's go on and talk a little bit more about kind of this area. Um, we're going to talk about, in addition to the oral and nasal cavities, I want you to kind of get a little bit of a feel and remember some of that anatomy. So let's talk about the bones of the face. We have the mandible, the jaw. We have the maxilla up here. We have the nasal bones and it provides some points for attachment for muscles which are gonna help with articulators. So all of those help with articulators. Okay, now let's talk about uh, bones of the cranium. So we have frontal bones up here. We have parietal, occipital, and we also have temporal. So, um, and what these bones are doing is they're really protecting the brain and it provides some points of articulation for muscles of the articulators. So when we talk about um, our jaw and our lips and our nose um, and things like that, there are, these facial bones, our, our cranial bones, are going to provide some points uh, for muscles to attach. Okay. Let's move on to slide 12. We're going to talk about a little bit more about the pharyngeal cavity. So remember that's going to be the throat and then also the nasal and the oral cavities. So it extends from the posterior portions of the nasal cavity. So remember posterior is behind. And then it's going to go downward through the back of the oral cavity and then continue on, but it does not include the larynx. So it stops here, okay? And then we'll have the larynx, which is going to be the, um, the laryngeal cavity. So that's gonna be different. Okay, now we have the nasal cavity. So the nasal cavity, just to give you a little bit more information on this, the nasal cavity extends from the nostrils to the pharynx, so the nostrils back to the pharynx or the throat. It receives inhaled air. The nasal cavity filters that air. Uh, it warms the air and it directs air towards the trachea. The direction of the sound traveled is determined by the velum or the soft palate. And the velum is um, also going to be helpful for us in determining nasal versus oral sounds. So the velum, I want you to take your tongue and go from your teeth and travel all the way back like you had peanut butter on the top of your mouth. So go all the way back. Okay, you'll notice that at the beginning, the roof of your mouth or your palate is hard. That's your hard palate. Eventually, you're gonna get about three quarters of the way back and you'll hit your soft palate. It goes from hard to soft. So that soft palate continues back and that's kind of a, it's called a hanging door or known as a hanging door. Basically what it does is when we want to make a sound out of our mouth, that lifts. And when that lifts, it closes off the nasal passage or the nasal cavity. So when we're saying b we don't want any ear coming out our nose. So that velum is gonna raise, and then no air is escaping through the nose. All the air is traveling out the mouth in order to make the b sound. Now, if we tried a sound that, start, um, that was a nasal sound, so we have m, n, and ing. Those are the three sounds in the English language that we want to go through the nasal cavity that are nasal sounds. So if we wanted that, then the velum's gonna drop down. It's gonna provide access uh, up to the nasal cavity and out through the nose. So if I say, mmm, my velum has now dropped, or the soft palate, to allow that air to escape through the nose, okay? Um, and so that's what's happening at that velopharyngeal port. Basically, the velum is either going up and down and then also the post for uh, 
the pharyngeal walls, the posterior pharyngeal walls, are going to constrict and move forward to help uh, meet with that velum or soft palate in order to close off the nasal passageway or open it for nasal sounds. Okay? So let's stop here for video one, and please watch video two to continue with this slideshow. Thank you.